The Auto 97 process runs basic fire behavior, driven by FlameApp, across a landscape or area of interest for the 97th percentile weather conditions. According to the Remote Automated Weather Station, or ROS, that's located nearest to the landscape. This process generates model outputs that can be viewed spatially or downloaded, as well as a summary report with graphs and tables, and it will leave us with a set of modeling inputs which represent the 97th percentile fuel moisture conditions that we can use in IFTDIS to represent the extreme fuel conditions as we model different fuel treatment scenarios. With all this information, we can quickly view how basic fire behavior is estimated to vary across our landscape under those 97th percentile conditions. For those experienced with modeling, they can also use this fire behavior information to check their landscape and see if there are suspect areas where the estimated fire behavior doesn't look right. Uh, those areas could require some landscape editing. To run the Auto 97, we'll go to the Landscape Evaluation stage of the planning cycle, click Landscape Summary, and select our landscape. If we wanted to run this for a specific area, we could choose an area of interest, but in this case, I'll just run it for our entire landscape. When ready, the output will become an active link. Clicking on that link will cause the summary report to open in a new tab. We can also get the same result by finding the report in My Workspace and it will be saved in the same folder as the landscape it's derived from. So we don't have to wait for this link to appear. If I wanted to start running the report, go off and do other things and check this in my workspace. There is also a status indicator there that we could refresh. To view the report, we'll find it in my workspace and click View Summary. Notice in the top right of the report, I can find the RAW's name and the dates used in generating the weather data for this report. These reports are helpful because they'll take all the characteristics that we'll see geospatially in Map Studio and quantitatively display them in different formats. This is handy because each component, such as canopy cover, canopy base height, and rate of spread, and so on, is broken out in charts and graphs for us. For example, when we look at the outputs in Map Studio, we'll see a lot of the TL8 fuel model on the map. But by looking at the report, we can say that 34% of the landscape is TL8. Looking at fire behavior, a large proportion is estimated to have flame lengths of up to 4 feet, but we'll see in the report that nearly a third is estimated to experience flame lengths of 4 to 8 feet or higher, and those will be areas to focus in on when we look at this geospatially. Notice I can jump around to various places in the report using the left panel to navigate, the entire report could be downloaded as a PDF using the button in the top right. Or we could copy and paste individual parts from this report into a Word document. Note the modeling inputs listed here. A quick way to pull these up later is to go to Modeling Playground, find the model output, and click View Inputs. To view our modeling information in the map, we'll go to Map Studio, click on Simulation Output Tools, select the model output, then open Layer List to view the features. If you're in My Workspace or Modeling Playground, you can also do this by finding your file clicking the View on Map button. Before moving on, we'll download a copy of the model outputs by going to My Workspace, finding the file, and clicking Download. The zip file that downloads contains a multiband geotiff of the outputs, a symbology folder with layer files, and it also includes an input file in case you want to work with this separately in FlameApp. I can also open the report and download a PDF copy of the entire report using the button to the top right. 